Hey everybody, welcome back into the studio. Today we're going to do one of our studio techniques and that is how I create one of my uh, custom made crackle inserts for my originals. Whenever somebody buys an original, they always want that little bit extra, that little something that gives that original a distinct look and a, a one-of-a-kind look. And so I like to create a, a custom crackle insert that gives a little bit of texture, a little bit of panache, and that Derek Wicks touch. They're quite simple to make. There's, there's not a lot to them. It basically comes down to a couple of steps, which are just knowing the material you want to use, applying the crackle, painting the crackle, and sealing the crackle. So Let's take you into the studio now, and I'll show you from step one right to the end how I create one of my crackle frames. So we've got these cut, and I'm just using some old, old liners. I've got a bunch of this around, and it's great for uh, doing um, crackle. So it's got the old canvas liner on it, which went out of date decades ago. So you just gotta pull that off. So once you get it going, Just pulls it off. Okay, so we've got all lined up now. Now what we want to do is slide the end in. Don't need a sponge yet. Right. So you can just slide this down. So that it encases your these are tightening bolts. So I haven't tightened this in hard yet at, at all. I'm actually just making sure everything lines up and that we got great 45s. And we did beautiful cuts this time. So now we're ready to glue the edges. And I like to do one end at a time. So I'll do this end and then I'll glue that end. Now you use a uh, framers miter magic, all right. So I'll loosen off, just ever so slightly. Okay, so now we're just going to apply glue to the corners. All right. Okay, I'm going to slide the piece in. And tighten these up. Just a little bit, not a lot, because you now you want to push down to make sure everything is nice and flat and lined up. And now you can apply pressure to all four corners. Okay, not too much pressure or you'll get uh, bowing, especially with a thin piece like this, it'll want to push up. Okay, and that's it. We'll glue those together and then we'll have the insert ready to show you how to do some uh, some crackle. All right, so I got my uh, gesso out. Got a little gish, we're ready to go. And all I want to do is just put a layer of gesso all the way around. And what it's this doing is it's just giving us a nice medium for our, our uh, um, crackle to stick to. I swear that old age is kicking in with the mmms and the ums and the... So I just go around the whole edge and put a nice even layer of gesso. And as you can see, I'm just streaking over the, the gold. Well, that's just so it gives, it's going to give it a little bit of a texture on the uh, on the gold so that when I do do my streaking on it later it'll uh, it'll have a little bit of a texture to it and a little bit of not a whole heck of a lot we want to keep everything as a, a minimal here let the crackle do the talking the 
crackle draws a lot of attention because it's it's got a lot of texture to it, right? Okay, so I'll do that that side that side too. Give it about an hour, and then we're ready to crackle. All right. So our gesso is nicely uh, uh, dried now, and just checking for any big burrs or anything. And we got our golden out, and we got a, a uh, popsicle stick. And literally, we'll just start pasting this right on. Oops. Now another key is I'm keeping the uh, popsicle stick level with the so that this side of the uh, um, mixture gets just as much crackle as the the uh, paste as the other side. So make it level. And the paste is fairly fairly firm, so you're not going to have to worry about it drooping down the sides or anything. It'll keep its shape. Okay, usually I'll go all the way around. So now I can start at the end. Okay, so I'll show you a little bit more. Once you do it a couple of times, You'll get to know how to angle your flat. By the way, you don't have to use a popsicle stick. I just use them because I buy them in bunches to do my modeling. You can use any flat surface you want. Some people use a, uh, a scraper, paint scraper, or a uh, um, anything that's flat. Anything that's flat at all. And I like the popsicle stick because I use this uh, uh, inch and a half girth a lot and just seems to be the perfect size to be able to move the paste around quite quickly and easily. Okay, that cleans up the edge. Put the popsicle stick inside. I just want to maintain the uh, the scoop profile and this is the biggest reason why I like using the popsicle stick because it's got the rounded edge so it can get into that scoop nicely now there's always going to be a little bit of manual cleanup but uh, you can get most of it with the uh, popsicle stick okay Yeah, our crackle's already starting to uh, gel, which is nice. I'll move around to this side. Okay, just scoop out the excess. Okay. And that's that. Now these little inconsistencies, they're great. They add to your, your, uh, your character when it's done. So don't try and worry about getting all those done. All those out, I mean, it adds to your crackle look. And that looks pretty good to me. So now I'll just let that sit. It takes about two to three days for the crackle to really get going. And uh, we'll see what happens three days from now. All right, so we're ready now to paint and I like to use the Rust-Oleum hammered look and it gives it a uh, very kind of stippled look to it. Um, 
Let's uh, give it a little bit of a coat. You can see why they call it a hammered look is it gives it a bit of an antique -y kind of finish, which I really kind of like. Now, I usually do this in my garage because of the stink, but today we're videotaping, so just a light coat because we'll put a second coat on after put a second coat on light coat put a second coat on Okay, and that's all I put in for the first coat. So you can see that it gives it a nice little textured coat. Okay. All right, so this is nice and dried now. And here's my outside uh, frame. It's just a piece of it. And you can see that the silvering on here has quite a few washes. Now this is just a black, looks to me like a black wash with a little bit of warmth in it. So I just get a couple of oil paints out use a little bit of black I got ivory here can be just about anything you want get a little bit of uh, a deep orange just a touch not a lot and a little bit of raw umber to give it that brownie feel to it Come on, there you go. All right. So it's kind of an orangey black. You really want it watered down. All right, and I just start slopping it on. All I want to do is get rid of that really shiny silver. And this glaze will actually slip right into the cracks of the crackle too. And just slap it on. Now the nice thing about oil washes is they look fairly dark, but they're going to dry a lot less intense than what you see here. And I'm just using straight old mineral spirits to turpentine, whatever you'd like to call it, to thin it out. There's a thicker area here, so we're going to just wash her down a little bit. Okay, so it beads nicely. Now, I've had people in the past when I've shown this technique email me and say, Oh, I did it, and all I did is bead. And well, that's because they ended up putting in an acrylic over top of an oil-based spray and this is an oil-based spray so acrylic's just not gonna do the trick you need an oil-based wash and that's why I'm using oils here I'm 
Now because this is a wash, this will usually be dried up within a, maybe a day. All right. And that's it. All right, so now we're ready to put our uh, black inside insert and uh, just taped off a couple of pieces of, of uh, this is just newsprint. Get it in stacks from Michaels. And we're just getting it as close as we can to the edge. You don't have to be right on because we're actually going to brush some texture into this. So, Okay, and I do this in sections because I actually want to brush, spray on a little bit of black and then brush. Spray on a little bit of black and then brush, okay? So, you get a little bit of black. It doesn't matter whether it's matte or it's gloss because in this case, in the end, I'm gonna end up putting a little bit of a matte finish spray, clear spray, uh, clear matte spray on it. So, it doesn't really matter, but I like to use the uh, matte black because it seems to set a little bit better, so. I just put a little bit of a black on there and then I just give it a brush so it doesn't have much of a spray look but you can see it leaves like a it leaves kind of a, a uh, a black textured look and I just over spray it over over top here All right And when you take this off, it just gives it a slight black uh, inside. It just gives it a little bit of a texture or a uh, value change, and it'll match the black of the outside. Okay. quick and then just brush it all over so it streaks okay and what it does is now that it's starting to set up do you see how you can create a streaky look to it Can take some of the paint off and the silver comes through. There we go. And so just, just gotta wait for it to set up a little bit so it starts getting tacky. All right. Take this off. Now, one thing I didn't mention was you really want to let the uh, washes you did dry because if you don't, then you're just going to peel up the paint right off your crackle. And then you got to recoat and start from the beginning again. The whole idea is, is you don't want a uh, solid black. Solid black will just be too stark. And by um, just putting a little bit of a brush stroke to it with a hard bristle brush, you little, let a little of that silver behind it come through. 
so it ties in. So it creates kind of a blacky gray. All right, and I just want to get a little Take this off. We have a nice black insert. Okay, so you can see how this creates a nice subtle change in uh, texture. So let's put this together and we'll we'll give you a good look. So I head back over to the chop saw and now I'm cutting my main molding. This one's three and a half inches so it's quite big. It's got enough girth to carry the large four foot uh, size of this original. It's black with a brown tinge and it's got a silver inlet. Now because it's black I need to marker the edges and that way if we're not 100% right on or we have any kind of shift in our molding we won't see it because we've blackened the edges to hide the beige of the wood. And just like the insert, we're going to spread the glue, we're going to throw it into our four-way speed frame clamp, and then we're going to use our Swanson Speed Square, everybody likes the term speed, to make sure that all of our corners are at a 90 degree. Alright, so let's uh, get our frame up here. And we'll lower it down and we'll insert our A nice fit. Did a, did a good job on this one. Sometimes I have a little more than a gap. That's you actually want a little bit of a gap to to uh, accommodate for the, the swelling of the wood. Wood. So we did a perfect job this time around. <laughs> Lucked out. All right. So we'll get the pinner. And we have a perfectly inserted liner, like and everything. Maybe a little hand touch up there. But yep, yeah, I'm liking that. That's away from the canvas, so I can actually put the original in now. Okay, let's get the uh, let's get the original in there. So there's the finished product. I really love doing crackle inserts. They give originals that one of a kind, that fancy touch. And because you're laying down the crackle different every time, you're painting it with different colors. It really is a one of a kind.
So let's go over the four steps. The first thing you want to do is you want to gesso the materials that you're going to use for your uh, insert. I used the uh, canvas liner here, took off the canvas, and uh, I just use that because it's convenient. It ha I have a lot of it, and if I need to get more of it, it's relatively inexpensive to get, and it saves me time. I have used plain old uh, one by two wood and cut a rabbit channel in it and then just sewed on top of it so any kind of surface hard firm surface will do for uh, your gesso yeah, I'm sorry, your crackle, but you need to gesso it. The gesso is the um, binder, the gripper between your surface and your crackle. Second stage is to lay down your crackle. Remember to make it level. Third stage is to uh, paint your crackle and add your washes. Um, you can use acrylic, you can use oils, but remember, depending on uh, what base you use, your washes will have to accommodate. And what I mean is, if you're using acrylics, as your base coat, no problem, you can use either acrylic or uh, oil washes, but if you're using an oil-based paint like I did in this tutorial, you want to use oil paints for your washes. And the final stage is to seal it. Now, sealing your, um, your crackle, uh, if you're going to leave it white, then I would seal it with some GAC 500. If you're going to spray paint it, they say to seal it too, but I've never really sealed any of my uh, crackles because I'm using an oil-based spray paint. It becomes a hard shell over top of it and it seals it pretty good and I've never had an issue with that. So those are my personal opinions on sealing it. So there it is. There you know, you know how to do uh, one of my custom uh, uh, crackle inserts. Hopefully it enhances your final look of your originals. And until next time, everybody, stay safe, have fun, be good to each other. Happy painting.